Hello, my name is Maddis, and today we're going to take a look at five new things coming in Thrones of Britannia, a Total War saga. The character system has been reworked for Thrones of Britannia, allowing you to progress with your characters in a way that makes sense to you. Characters will begin with some traits which will make them better as a general or a governor. The more time spent being in one of those positions will grant more favourable traits. So you could create a legendary general who makes your men formidable fighters that only a fool would meet in battle. Or you could create one who can range far and fast, striking enemy settlements and sacking them for all they're worth. You can also do this for governors who can boost your income from the region they govern, and boost food output, extend siege holdout times and much more. All the skills can be leveled up five times for greater bonuses. And throughout this process, all the skills are unlocked and can be selected, allowing you to decide how you want your characters to progress. The tech tree is less of a tree and more of a series of branches. Split into military and civic, there are several branches to go down, all of which are locked from the start of the game, and must be unlocked through completing prerequisite conditions, from recruiting units and sieging settlements, and so on. This gives you some objectives throughout your campaign, and shouldn't be ignored or it will seriously impact your late game. These technologies will unlock new buildings, grant public order bonuses, raise the starting capacity of units, and upgrades to later game regiments. By breaking it down into branches based on different areas, such as melee infantry, spearmen, and agriculture, players can just research the techs in the areas that they want to, instead of being forced through other technologies to get to the one that they want. War is a balancing act and your people will always want what they don't have. When you're at peace and prospering, your people want war and conquest. When you are at war for years on end, your people will want peace. This is a scale, and when the scale is balanced, everything will be well. When it tips in one direction or another, public order, leader influence, fame, upkeep and replenishment bonuses and penalties will come into play. And the further it tips, the greater these will become. The scale places restrictions on your rule. You cannot sensibly march your men off to war if they don't want one. There is always a way of dealing with the wants of the people, and that is giving them what they want. But do the people understand the cost? When recruiting a unit, you can select the army you want it in and recruit it, so long as you have enough money and food to feed them. You don't need to have a specific building in that region to recruit the unit. However, you won't get an entire unit, only a small band of men which will replenish to full over time. The units available come from a faction-wide manpower pool. You have a chance of gaining a unit per turn. This can be improved by upgrading your settlement's main building or researching techs. You can improve unit replenishment by building granaries, cell terrains and arenas, all of which have replenishment multipliers. This changes the focus off unit construction to unit replenishment and preservation, placing a far greater value on each unit than in previous Total War games. This also makes Wars of Attrition far more viable and prevents being able to recruit a huge army within one turn without substantial amounts of food and money. In a province there is a major settlement and some villages. The major settlements are large and defendable, having a garrison inside at all times. These settlements can have specialities. A standard settlement will have a meeting hall, others will have a long port, some will be religious settlements with a cathedral or monastery. Within these settlements you can construct buildings that will add multipliers to your villages, while also granting faction-wide bonuses, public order and income. Villages are farms, churches, mines, trade resources and locations. These are the lifeblood of your kingdom, bringing in the harvest that feeds your people and the coin that pays them. If an enemy army invades your lands, they can take key strategic villages such as farms. If you don't have enough reserves, your men will begin to starve. Mines that supply you with the coin to pay your armies. If your men are not paid, their swords are not yours. When you take one of these settlements, you take the surrounding lands with it, and you can garrison your troops inside the village, which will grant you replenishment. This now gives you the opportunity to, instead of having to siege your enemy and losing a lot of men, you can take away their coin, their food, and watch as their army melts away. The game is still in alpha, so everything you see here is still being worked on. Thrones of Britannia will be released on April 19th, but you can pre-order your copy now and get 10% discount from selected retailers.